The year is 1997, and I hear this very strange chime coming from our office upstairs. I hear typing vigorously, and I'm like, wow, I never heard my sister type that fast before. That's nuts. And then I hear my dad take a deep breath, and he says, oh my gosh, this is going to change the world. The chat room is something we're all familiar with today. Back then, it was completely foreign. Pretty much the only way you could get in contact with your friends back then was to knock on their door and say, hey, can they come out and play? Or, on the other hand, you called their house, which was, who you had to talk to their parents. No cell phone, so you had to call their house phone. Therefore, the parent picked up and said, who is this? And it was always kind of nerve wracking, but at the same time, it kind of built up this responsibility of getting your social skills up. But this is where chat rooms really came into play for me. Chat rooms shaped who I was and who I am today in a very drastic way. First things first, we gotta talk about that bread and butter. That is AIM, AOL Instant Messenger. It was the biggest thing on the block at the time. But then you had other instant messengers like MSN and Yahoo. And then of course you had those friends who were like, well, I'm only on Yahoo and I'm only on MSN. So then you'd have like three or four different windows up when those came along. <laughs> Overall, AIM was king. They were the people that really glued the instant messenger revolution together. And one of my best memories is I was in fifth grade and we were in class and the teacher walked away for like two seconds and we all go, hey, are you gonna get on AIM tonight? Are you gonna get on tonight? Think about it. We were planning to have a conversation. <laughs> That's how big of a deal this technology was at the time. Now, if you look at it, it's a more like ancient version of Discord at this time. So you'd get on there and you just talk. That's it. If you've never been on AOL before or any instant messenger before, you had to learn all this new vocabulary. TTYL, which is talk to you later, which actually meant they had to leave. <laughs> Nowadays with texting, you have to kind of be like, all right, this conversation's over and kind of linger because you have constant communication all the time. BRB, TTYL, later down the road when you're a teenager. ASL, which you can look up. <laughs> all of this new vocabulary you got very quickly. BRB, you know, be right back, I'm gonna go grab a sandwich and then come back to my computer that all of us share on the same dial-up connection in this house. And if they pick up the phone, I don't get to talk to you anymore. <laughs> it was an event to get into a chat room regardless what platform it was on. I even had my first ever pen pal over AOL Instant Messenger. I met her because she went on a cruise and then met one of my friends and then he introduced me to her in the chat room and we ended up becoming really close. And what's really cool is she lived in California and at the time I lived in Virginia. And so completely different worlds. And I got to understand the differences of how we live and how the culture might be a little different. Like everything. It was kind of modernizing the idea of sending letters back and forth and I thought it was really neat. But as I got older, I got braver and started exploring different websites and different chat rooms. I was always curious, what's the best way to introduce yourself to a random person on earth? The thing is, is since we are all anonymous online at this time, you could really practice social skills. You could literally see what works and doesn't work. Of course, there's body language and tone of voice that comes into factor in person, but when it comes to getting the guts to talk to a girl or getting the guts to just kind of make conversation with any random stranger, Chat rooms were there for you to literally just go for it. <laughs> Short answers were not the way to go, period. Hi, or hey, no, don't do that. Or you get the LOL okay, and you're like, oh my heart, oh my God. Short answers just were not the way to go. <laughs> like if you were talking to somebody over a public chat room, if you got the LOL okay, or the K, or nice, that meant I'm already bored. I'm tired of you. And some of my best friends I've ever had in my entire life or whatever time period of my life were over things like public chat rooms. I just wasn't a socially consistent kid when it came to school and everything else. Chat rooms gave me this opportunity to kind of do a practice run and then try it and then fail and then reset over and over again. But being anonymous also came with some downsides. If somebody didn't have a photo or a picture of themselves or anything along those lines and you've been talking to this person for like a week or two, 
most likely they aren't real. I learned that the hard way. I had this relationship with a girl on one of these websites and lo and behold, it wasn't the right person. <laughs> and I ended up finding the real person and then letting them know that somebody was using their photo and I embarrassed myself. True story. And we also can't forget getting broken up with over a chat room or an instant messenger. That's basically the equivalent of what text messaging now is and getting broken up with. Imagine getting that cute little chime on AIM and it's like, bloop, it's like, we're over. <laughs> And here I am in like my middle school romance thinking the world is ending. I'm gonna have to block her. <laughs> but AIM also had a voice chat. A lot of people don't remember that you could put on this cheap crap headset from like Circuit City at the time and you could literally talk to people over it because it used a phone line. It's funny because you could have just talked to people over the phone, but it wasn't the cool way right now, right? It, it was the new technology of us taking advantage. We're talking through the computer. It's so cool. Even things like Xbox Live, where back in the day as a 14 year old, when Halo 2 came out, I got destroyed by older kids, you know, making fun of my higher pitch voice at the time and everything. But that made me a stronger person. It gave me thicker skin and it, it made me adapt to awkward social situations rather than giving in to a bully or something. In game chat in Xbox and also online servers, that was the only thing as well. I know that's kind of a side note, but think about it. You are only allowed to talk to the strangers or your friends that join in with the strangers. Xbox Live parties, none of that did not exist. So with that not existing, it forced you to be socially interactive. And if you survived Modern Warfare 2, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> you can hear this photo. <laughs> Skype was also a huge player in this because once AIM started to kind of go down into the sunken depths of the sea, Skype came in as like a higher quality version. And at the same time, you had fairly clear video chat for the time. This is before FaceTime. You sat down and you video chatted with people. And don't get me wrong, some people still use Skype today, but at the time, Skype was the way to go. If you were doing, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations, and especially if you were in a long distance relationship. I was in a long distance relationship, it really helped me out a while. And also my roommate at the time, they would like get on Netflix and like try to synchronize watching a movie together. And it's like charming for the technology at the time. Random chat rooms just aren't really popular anymore. Sure they exist, but usually they're at really low quality. Is it possible to go on a random chat room, meet somebody and have a connection with them and just kind of get to know each other? Of course it is. But if you're gonna pick somebody you say met in person or you know you could meet in person instantly through Facebook or somebody local or et cetera, what are you gonna do? Personally, my experiences on open chat rooms I'm so thankful for them, the good ones, the bad ones. The internet at one point was the Wild West. It was just completely bananas and boggers because we were all just trying to figure out what this thing was. Before the big dogs like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter took over, you went to a bunch of different websites and there's beauty and everything being in centralized locations, but at the same time, the novelty of the internet a lot of it has gone away. A perfect example though is sites like Omegle or Omegle, however you wanna say it, but that's still going strong today somehow, but they're pretty much the last stand when it comes to higher quality random chat rooms talking to strangers. Omegle though, when you go there, it feels like a time capsule. Like I feel like I go all the way back because you just go in and full send it with somebody you don't know. Being anonymous is way less common now because of things like Facebook and Instagram where your identity is you online. People's online presence is way more personal than it used to be and not really by choice. It's a much more dangerous place on the internet now to kind of practice social skills and not screw up. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know I rarely upload on this channel, but if you liked this video, please let me know. And also hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Tell me in the comment section below, let me know what your craziest chat room experience ever was. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.